Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll look at editing using Audacity. The major topics we'll cover include basic editing techniques as well as track management. For this video, I'm using Audacity version 2.0.1 on a Mac. So before we start working with audio, I thought we'd look at how we do editing with text and then compare that to audio um, since we're all pretty familiar with writing text. So if I want to write some text into this Word document, the first thing I have to do is position my cursor where I want to insert the text. So I would click and that's the location that text is going to appear. It's the same with audio. You can position your playhead where you want it to be and insert audio at that location. So I'm going to uh, insert some text here. Okay, so there's a nice sentence to work with. Um, you could think of this as a waveform. Uh, so a stream of text is a lot like a stream of audio in terms of editing. So if I have a section that I don't want, I have something extra or a mistake, I can select that and then just hit delete on my keyboard. And that removes what I don't want from that stream of text works the same with audio. If I want to apply a special effect to part of my stream of text, um, I would select the area I want to apply the effect to, and then I would apply the effect. So I'm going to take this word and make it bold. All right? It's the same concept when recording audio. Um, basically select what it is you want to work with and apply whatever change you want to make to the audio. So with that information in mind, let's take a look at Audacity and see what we can do here. So I'm going to record uh, an ABCs for my project, but I'm going to record it out of order. Um, so this will be just like typing a sentence. I'm going to record some audio to work with. So here we go. C, B, A. Okay, so there's my sentence or my sound wave and I'm going to apply some edits. Now before I do this, um, one thing that's nice to do inside of Audacity is to stretch your sound wave out to fit the actual project window. It's a little easier to work with. So I'm going to press this button up here that says fit to project. And you can see it's the same sound wave, but now it's been stretched out. It's a little bit easier to see the peaks and valleys and where the actual recordings are, as well as where the dead space is between recordings. So let's rewind this and let the playhead play through so you can get a good sense of where uh, my voice has been recorded and where it's just dead air. Remember, I'm playing this audio out through my computer speakers. It's not going to sound as good as my voice, but at least you can hear what my computer is playing. So here we go. C. B, A. Okay, so there's our sound wave. Um, obviously, there's large sections I don't need. So as I showed you with the sentence, if I don't want something, I can select it, hit delete on my keyboard, and it removes that chunk of my audio recording, just like deleting words out of a sentence. All right, there's a large chunk back here. Um, now, obviously, I didn't clean this up very well. There's still large sections of dead air. What I'm going to end up doing is preserve my original recording, and I'm going to copy-paste the parts that I want to keep into new tracks. And that way, I'm not losing any of my original data. If I need to make edits later, I still have it. Um, but I can always export my new data, the new tracks I'm going to create, um, for use with my project. So I'm going to stretch this back out to fit my window since I made those edits. And what I'm going to do now is uh, find each letter and copy paste it into a new track. So I believe this is my letter A. Let's highlight it. I'm just ballparking it, so you have to do a couple tests until you get what you're looking for. I'll play it. A. A. That's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to copy that. And that's what I want to put into a new track. So now what I need to do is create a new track to actually paste this audio into. So I'm going to go under Tracks, Add New, and just make a new audio track. Now you'll notice the tracks we we're working with so far, these are called mono tracks. There's only one channel to them, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there are stereo tracks out there, so let's create a stereo track to compare. Here's a stereo track. You'll notice there's two channels. There's a left and a right channel, therefore a stereo track. Um, let's see what happens when I insert a mono recording into a stereo track. So I'm going to move my playhead back to the beginning. And then, that, again, I have to position my cursor where I want to insert things. I'm going to hit Paste. And you'll notice it pastes the same data in both channels. So it just duplicates the information. Here in my mono track, if I put the playhead back at the beginning, so I'll rewind. I'll hit Paste again. 
Um, same thing. Now how does a mono track play through a stereo system? Again, it just duplicates this information and plays it through both the left and right channel. Um, whether I use a stereo track to do that or a mono track, it's going to be the same effect. So I'm going to delete this stereo track since I really don't need it. It's just mono information anyways. And to delete that track, I'm just going to use this little X in the upper left corner of the track right here. Looks like it's rid of that track. Okay, so I have my edit here. I'm going to rewind my playhead to the beginning, and I'm going to test it. Let's see how it sounds. A, C, B. Okay, so you notice when I'm testing, it plays all of the available tracks, not just the one that I have selected. One thing I can do while testing is I can mute other tracks, so I can isolate a single track and hear the effect there. So I'm going to mute this first track by clicking there, rewind my playhead, and test it one more time. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, now what I need to do is make the same edits for the letters B and C, and we're pretty much done with our editing. So I'm going to unmute this track. I'm going to find the letter B, which looks to be right about here. I'll highlight it. Um, let's try that much, and we'll test it. B, B. That's pretty good, so I'll copy this. Um, I'm going to make a new track for the letter B. Now I could paste this right into the same track as the letter A. Um, but sometimes I'm going to want to apply effects to different letters, and if they're all in the same track, this gets a little more tricky. The best practice is to put each edit into its own track. It gives you a little more flexibility, versatility when you're editing your audio. So I'll go into Tracks, Add New, Audio Track. And then I'm going to use the timeline up here to sort of figure out how much delay I want between each letter. I'll do half a second, so this is about 0.4. I want to be approximately 0.9. You notice I click here and I put my cursor, the playhead, right there. Um, it also shows up in the timeline up here, so I can eyeball it pretty good from there. Um, so this is where I want to paste into, so I'll hit paste, and there's the letter B. So I'm going to mute that first track, rewind my playhead to the beginning, and test this out. Let's see how it sounds. A, B. That's pretty good. So now we just need to do C, so I'll unmute the first track. Um, one more thing with editing tracks, if I did the entire alphabet, obviously I wouldn't be able to fit all the tracks on the screen, and that can be, you know, sometimes it's nice to see your whole project on one screen at times. So what you can do is if I put my cursor right between the two tracks and I click and drag, you can shrink a track or you can expand a track. So if you have a really complex track with lots of peaks and valleys, it gives you a little better view. Once you're done editing, you can shrink it down get it out of sight. So you have a little more visual space there and can manage more tracks on screen. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for this one. There we go. Okay, so I believe this was the letter C, so let's highlight a chunk that we want to work with. Test it out. C. C. No, it cuts out kind of hard there, so I'm going to re reselect. Grab a little bit more of the wave for him. See how that sounds. C. B. Oh. There's my problem. I need to mute my other tracks. So let's uh, expand these. So this is a good example of when you need mute. I'm going to mute these two. Let's test this track again. C. C. That's much better. So let's copy that. Um, I'm going to mute that track. Make these unmuted because I'm going to test them in a minute. Insert a new track. Position my playhead. So this one is right about 1.3. So we'll go up to about 1.8 a little bit less. There we go. Paste it in. And now I have my ABC with about the same amount of delay between each letter. Let's rewind the playhead to the beginning and test it out. A, B, C. That's pretty good. So that's basic editing with sound. In the next video I'll show you how to save your Audacity project as well as how to export your sound files for use in your projects. Um, Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.